Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Wednesday, February the 26th. I'm Eric Wilkinson and you very well may recognize me as the Wolfman from Mainstream Media where I've talked about everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. I do about those same things in these daily market commentaries where I talk about the economics, the geopolitical environment, how that's going to impact the overall markets. And then I layer on top of that some option strategies that I find to implement into my portfolio. We're trying here to teach you guys how to implement options into your portfolio so that you can increase that yield uh, and ultimately uh, create a better portfolio value year over year on your P&L. All right. Without further ado, let's talk about that economic data across the pond. We didn't get a whole lot of economic data other than Lagarde speaking. And here in the United States, we also had uh, Kaplan speaking. New home sales coming out nicely at 764,000 units sold, and it was expected to be 714,000. They also revised last month's number up nicely from 694 to 708,000, most likely due to lower interest rates. Those bigger or the home sales are really happening out here in the West where I am in Arizona and in the West and in the Midwest there uh, as well. Uh, also, crude oil inventories, a build of only half a million barrels expected to be a build of 2.3 million barrels. So a drawdown there in a sense over what was expected. That's giving a little bit of support here with crude oil as we were testing that 48 handle. As you can see, we broke just below that in uh, 49 into the 48 handle earlier this morning. Then we started seeing this rebound based on that crude oil inventories. Also, economic data, or not economic, let's say earnings data, coming out pretty good uh, for most of the companies. Yes, that is hindsight. We have the coronavirus, really this overarching theme that's really probably caused most of the market sell-off here as China has really been slowing down. That's going to affect us going into the summer as everybody is worried about there. Well, you know, uh, they had CNBC had a doctor on today and talking about the coronavirus. Yes, it is a new virus that we are really un, uh, don't know that much about. It spreads very rapidly. But one of the things that they are noticing is that the coronavirus really affects people that have some type of issue, whether it's heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and elderly. Okay. Now, think about this, put this into perspective. Globally, just over 2,000 deaths. Uh, that seems like it could be very pandemic-ish. But then if you take a look back at what we see with influenza or the common cold, uh, even here in the United States, over somewhere between 30 and 50,000 people yearly die from that virus. Globally, that is upwards of 300 to 500 thousand globally. So it's really a drop in the bucket. I, I'm i kind of on the fence with this. Yes, we don't know a whole lot about it. It does spread rather rapidly, but it isn't like killing strong, healthy humans. So uh, that to me puts it a little bit into perspective. I think it's a little bit overdone. I've been talking about that uh, uh, more and more. Uh, so to me, you know, I think that this sell-off, yes, that is going to affect us globally because of China really shutting down. But when you put it into perspective about how many people this is really affecting, uh, it seems a little bit overdone, to be quite honest. But having said that, we just saw crude oil break below uh, that $50 handle. I think we'll probably hold on to that, or at least somewhere around today, uh, and we're going to get a bounce in this crude oil, especially with the drawdown we're seeing there. People are still traveling here in the United States anyway. Gold futures are off by about 10 points today. It looks like they're in the green there, but that's after the open. We're positive on that. But that top there of almost 1,700 that we saw, again, it was a flight to safety with this sell-off in the equities. It's getting a little bit of a bid right now, but that's despite the fact that we're seeing equities uh, create new highs probably as we're speaking here. Bonds, I think they're a little bit of exhausted up to the upside. It does seem like there is a global uh, push to have 
easy money going on, uh, where, you know, helicopter money for lack of a better word, where even in like Korea, I think that they were talking about um, each, uh, each person was going to get like $1,200 US equivalent. And that seems like a lot of money to be passing around to every person. Um, and then we've got the VIX. It is coming off into the 25s, you know, we did get up into the 30s yesterday when it was at the height of the sell-off there. Here we'll look at the equities. We got the Dow Jones up about 357 points. It is off the high. When I started this, we were on the highs for the most part, but still making a push back above the 200-day moving average. It was a little bit alarming that we settled below there yesterday. It was very close to the point of control, but um, we have seen some volume really pick up uh, the last couple of days. It's been pretty massive volumes across the board, to be quite honest. And then we've got the NASDAQ up about 151, really being dr driven by the FANG stocks. Some of the other stocks, you know, like Microsoft, I was talking about making a nice move today. I, they don't have a whole lot of exposure to uh, China, nor does Facebook. So if you're looking for some value opportunities out there, those are two that I would suggest looking into as well. We've got the NASDAQ up about 150 points back into that 9,000 handle. E-mini S&P is making a push here as well, up almost 40 points on the day, back above the uh, 61 Fibonacci here. It's up above the 3166, at least as of right now, which is nice. We did go down and test the 50, made a nice bounce off of that uh, earlier this morning. As you can see with the E-mini S&Ps overnight, got very bearish, but coming into today, especially with our economic data, started giving it a little bit of a push. I think people are realizing that this is a little bit overdone to the downside. Um, you know, like I said, I, I think that it's uh, uh, a little bit of a media frenzy going on here as they needed something to talk about. And that did uh, obviously help exacerbate this down move in the markets. All right. So we're going to talk about Disney. I uh, Disney, remember, I'm long on this Disney. Bob Iger left. They've got a new CEO in there. So uh, that caused this bit of a down drop in Disney as well. You know, I've been trying to do some dollar cost averaging in here by lowering my overall cost basis on this. I'm long Disney a lot higher at about 145 is where I've dollar cost averages this I've, I've got the synthetic long with the 145 calls i'm long and short the 145 puts in there uh but i've lowered my overall cost basis by selling 160 calls from december into january and now uh if you remember i sold the march at, and in the march and did the 160 calls there i also yesterday rolled over my calls down from the 160s to the 145s and was able to collect uh, 54 cents in there. I bought those back for 14 cents today. I think we're going to get a bit of a bounce here. Another 40 cent lowering of the cost basis on that with that high implied volatility uh, coming out a little bit helped me as well. Uh, so just trying to stay mechanical with these. And with MasterCard, I did a little bit more averaging with this. Remember, I did this originally very small in MasterCard. Well, I added some... Um, of the, the March 145 calls that I was already short. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. In the, those are the 145 calls in uh, Disney that I was just talking about there. But the March for uh, MasterCard, I was selling the 270 puts in there, thinking that this was a very good location to get involved if it was coming down to the point of control. Uh, that would be somewhere, if it pushed just below that, I, I would be happy to be buying MasterCard at these levels. It, they seem to print money, and that would be a good location. So I added a little bit to that and sold those March 270 puts today for $2.22. So my average now on this is around 170, uh, 175-ish on that because originally those MasterCards that I had sold yesterday I sold for a dollar twenty-four, so uh, added another dollar to that trade on those short puts and bringing up by about fifty cents. So one seventy-four is my break-even now in Mastercard. All right, that's about it. That's all I've got. 
uh, gotten done today. Just keeping an eye on this bounce, uh, staying very diligent with it. Delta Airlines cutting some some more flights in there. That's hurting me as well because I am long Delta, short United on that. The United trade's working out quite nicely. Maybe not making up enough for the Delta trade, but uh, that I'm going to hold on to that uh, MasterCard trade a little, or sorry, that uh, United trade a little bit longer despite the fact that I've achieved my 50% of max profit on that. I'll just talk about it. I've got the, uh, we'll pull up a chart on it because I don't think I have one ready. Um, United Airlines uh, on this trade, you can see, is selling off along with Delta. So it's more of a Paris trade in there. And I have on the March short the 85 calls in there that I originally sold for 79 cents and they are trading 25 cents right now. So, uh, like I said, better than a 50% of max profit on that because Delta is really coming off quite a bit uh, even today. Actually, they're slightly in positive territory as is uh, with Delta being a little bit negative right now. So I got, a, got those on trying to uh, stay mechanical with all these trades, you guys. That's what we're talking about in these webinars. I'm gonna be doing another one tomorrow on long calls. Is this the opportunity to start putting on some long call trades and take advantage of a bounce? Might very well be. I'll talk about all the rules that we need to have in and around the environment, in and around the underlying in order to implement that into our portfolio for a trade to the upside. So check that out at protraderstrategies.com. We'll talk about strike location and everything else. I've got some really good, interesting uh, thesis on my strike location versus what you might find online as to their strike location and why mine is better. So check that out at protraderstrategies.com. And if you can't take that, before I do that, actually, we've got the disclaimer. I forgot to throw this up a little bit earlier. Keep in mind, we are an educational company. Everything we're talking about here is for your educational purposes. It is up to you guys to make sure you do your own homework and uh, make sure this is appropriate for you. Uh, take a moment to read over this. And if you can't take that, take it easy.